Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with the Speedster today. Now this is a 1955 Pre-A Speedster, so super cool car. We're going to be doing some more engine work on it. Um, last time, what did we do? We did the spark plugs, we set the valves, and checked the timing on the car, and it is running a little bit better, but our number three spark plug was really schmutzy, so I think we've got an issue with the left carburetor, plus that left carburetor is weeping a little bit, so I wanna pull them both out. We're gonna clean them, and then we'll go ahead and retune that and just start from there. So, okay, so um, it's gonna be super fun. This engine that's in this car is actually not the 1955 engine. It's actually a 1960, I believe, so it's a B engine. So this is pretty common. When you've got a, a really nice car like this, a lot of times uh, the owner has a 55 engine, but it's in the garage, and you really don't want to trash those things out. So this is a great engine to run. Actually puts out a little more power, and um, you don't have to worry about destroying the original engine. Okay, so um, I want to take a couple of minutes to thank one of our Patreon supporters, um, David Roddick. He sent us, well, so we sent out some swag and stuff when, when people join, which is awesome. And he sent back his, which is cool. So um, he says, some people collect art, I drive art. So it's pretty neat. He's got www.idriveart.org is his website. So he gave us um, some stickers and his card and stuff. And David, I just want to say thank you so much for that. It's going to get a, uh, a place of honor up on the wall. It's great. So thank you so much for that. So, let's get started with this. It's not gonna to be too difficult. We don't have a, it's just, pulling off the carburetors on this car is actually quite easy. They're Zenith carburetors, same carburetors we have in our 1958. So, I'm pretty familiar with these. I've had these things apart a zillion times. So, okay, so let's get into it, get these carburetors off and see what we're into. To give you an idea of what we're looking at here, this is the left carburetor and you can see it's kind of schmutzy in there. There's a lot of dried gas and it's brown and it shouldn't be, it should be sort of silvery colored. We're gonna go ahead and get that out. These air cleaner elements that are on here are absolutely falling apart. So we're gonna replace those things as well. The other carburetor on the right side doesn't look quite as bad, but we'll pull it and clean it as well. Something I want to show you, do you see all the little bubbles in the paint of the tin work down there? That's from gasoline, so that's a telltale sign that our carburetor has been dripping a little bit. I'm going to start by taking this air cleaner -y thing off. It is literally just crumbling and falling apart, so I'll be careful to get it off, but I don't want a bunch of this debris everywhere. So, I'm careful to get these things off. There we go. Yeah, so you can see they're just absolutely falling apart here, so that's no good. I'm gonna have to replace that. Oh, and that leaves us with a bunch of schmutz here on these air cleaners. We'll have to get to that. So I wanna get the air cleaner out of the way a little bit so I've got a little more room. I think that's a 14 millimeter on this guy. It's not on very tight at all. There we go. Okay. Lift this guy off. And these are legit Connect air cleaners too. That's pretty sweet. It's a nice piece. We have a fuel line back here we need to disconnect. There are four 12 millimeters here holding this thing on. Nuts. And then of course we have to disconnect our throttle linkage as well. I like to get the throttle linkage out of the way. Um, a 10 millimeter works great for not knocking these little guys off. You just put it behind there and pops it right off. It's awesome and this thing will just sort of go up here, kind of out of the way and fold it over on top there like that. Next, let's deal with the fuel line. It's going to be over here. It's a 17 millimeter. And there's going to be a gasket on each side of this banjo fitting here. You always want, there might be some gas in here. I haven't run the car for a week, so there's probably not much, but just be ready for that if there ever is. All right, there we go. 
All right, we can move this out of the way and put this guy right back in. That just leaves the 12 millimeters actually holding the carburetor onto the manifold. Now, the, it's really hard to get these things off with a, with a normal size wrench, but this little baby 12 works great for this sort of thing. One thing you have to be super careful of, the uh, thumb screws on the side for the air bleeds are made out of brass, and it's so easy to just kind of go right into one of them and bend them. So just, if you're ever, t if you're ever taking off a Zenith carburetor, just kind of careful with that. Now it's really important when you take these things off, there's a washer, a floppy washer underneath each one of the nuts. Make sure you collect and count all four washers and all four nuts. Last thing you want is something falling down into the intake manifold. There we go. First one. And the washer. Right, and that's it. It just lifts straight up after this. Move it around the fuel line there. There we go. Okay. And here's our prize. Zenith carburetor. These are the uh, air bleeds I was talking about on the side here. And you can see like the nuts are right down here. So if you try to loosen this, you'll hit this thing and you can easily bend these things. They bend super easily. So, all right, so this is it. We'll go ahead and put it on the bench. Now I wanna go ahead and put some, um, definitely wanna put something in the intake manifolds, make sure nothing falls down in there. Go ahead and do that. All right, okay. All right, to the bench. Now the first thing I wanna do is just sort of inspect this thing. It looks like our leaks have been on the back here, on this side, because it's, it's where it's the most schmutzy and the most yellow here. A few things I like to look at when I'm tearing down one of these carburetors. I like to look in the float bowls and just make sure that there isn't a ton of debris down in there. That can just signal some other problems like a bad fuel filter or something. And then also a bunch of debris could possibly work its way into the jets. So we wanna make sure that they're also clean. Another thing is I always wanna use the correct size screwdriver when I'm pulling all these parts out. It's so easy to just bend over or cheese out these screws. So the exact right screwdriver is critical to not screwing up the top of these parts. If you're starting to get a little bit confused, one of the things I do is definitely take some pictures of it. I've had these carburetors apart many times, so I'm pretty familiar with them. But I've taken many, many photos of where this bit goes and where that bit goes. Something else I do when I'm tearing these apart is to use multiple trays. And then as I work through different sub-assemblies and start the carburetor, I go ahead and put those in a specific tray. It just helps keep everything much more organized. One last thing is as you're taking parts off, Take a look at the gaskets and the seals and all that sort of thing and just kind of make a mental note of what needs to be changed and what you think can go back on. With all the parts removed, our next step's just gonna to be to clean everything thoroughly. I'm gonna use some carburetor cleaner and some brake cleaner and I'll blow everything out with compressed air. It's really just kind of a boring bit here to clean everything. Our top is awfully dirty as well, so we want to get all this schmutz off of these things and brighten them up as best we can. I'm a big fan of this stuff too. It's great. You can just pop this thing off, put your stuff in the tray, let it sit in there for a bit, and when you pull them out, all the parts look nice and shiny and clean. Love this stuff.
After a couple hours of scrubbing away, all the parts are bright and shiny clean. I blew out all the jets and all the little orifices and the bodies and things. So everything is completely clean, got all the schmutz off of it, and we're ready to reassemble the carburetor. The reassembly went pretty smoothly. I did end up replacing all of the flat gaskets. Now, as far as the needle and seat goes, there's a set of washers underneath there and their thickness determines the float level. Now, these washers were kind of weird and too big, so I had to replace them, but I had to make sure I got that thickness just right or I'd change the float level. The last thing I did was to paint the throttle body gloss black out of the factory. They were all nice and black and shiny, so I just wanted to repaint it to give it that last added touch. All right, well, that's it. What do you think? Does that look a lot better than it did before? Holy cow, huh? So it was, it was pretty sad before. I think it looks a lot better. Um, I know it's a lot cleaner, so it should run better as well. Certainly be easier to tune. It's a couple of days later and the weather here has changed. Remember this bit? This time of year, the weather can go from this to this. Now let's get our timer started. Well, that may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's still, it's kind of cold out. It's like in the 40s. So at any rate, we have our carburetor all done, ready to go, the left one at least. I painted the base and cleaned everything up really well. I think it looks great. I think it's look great on the car. Should run better and uh, hopefully not leak. So what I want to do is get this one installed before I take the right one off. And the reason I do that is that this car has a mechanical fuel pump. So it takes forever for it to fill up the bowls on uh, the carburetors. And if I pull both of them at the same time, then I got to crank and crank and crank to fill both of them. But if I leave one of them on, then when I replace the left one here, I can go ahead and start the car because it'll start on the right side at least. Fill this one up when we hear all four cylinders going. We're good to go. And then I can shut the engine off and get to the right carburetor. So it's a pretty simple bit to put this back in. It's just our four bolts, our fuel line and, and throttle linkage and such. Pretty easy to put back on. Let's see if we can brighten these up a little bit as well. It's just old staining. All right, that looks a lot better. A lot less stained. With our intake manifold all clean, go ahead and pull this out. Now I want to get these, I'm just going to replace these. They actually look okay. They don't look broken or worn out too bad, but I've got a brand new set, so might as well. Now this is kind of interesting. Do you see this? This is actually a phenolic base here. You can see about how thick it is. And this is a thermal barrier is what this is. I actually have this on our car as well. And I really like it. It, it helps keep the uh, carburetors from overheating and just sort of getting this thermal wash up here from these short little itty bitty intake manifolds. So let's see, so we can pull this one off as well. Oh, it is really stuck to this intake manifold too. That's all right, there we go. There it goes. Here are my new gaskets here. Of course, we'll need two, one for each side of the phenolic spacer. So we'll put the first one on here. Just go straight over the top there. Drop that guy down there, yay. Put our phenolic spacer on. Now with this kit for the phenolic spacer, it also comes with longer studs because you wouldn't want to put this kit on without extending these studs a little bit. They'd just be a bit too short. And then our next gasket, there we go. And then easy peasy, our carburetor just goes on top of that. Just like that. Super simple. And then once again, we'll just put a little, little thing in here in the top of the carburetor just to, just to be certain we don't drop anything in there. I'm going to go ahead and put in our four washers and four nuts. Use our little baby wrench here. Cinch them all down. Sometimes it's a little easier also to move the throttle linkage all the way open to get a little more clearance. Cinch down the ones in the back here. All right, carburetor's in. 
So we'll pull this guy up, and I'll put it in through here, and I'll throw this on here. And the trick is to do all this without it all coming apart and falling apart and all that. Here we go. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And I always try to sort of wiggle it a bit so that the washers will seat themselves well. This is at 17. Now these washers are kind of funny. They really they expand a bit when you get gas on them. So you might find that after running the engine a little bit, it'll start to weep a little bit here. You just come back with your wrench and just give it the least little bit just to cinch it back up and um, nine times out of ten that that takes care of it. Last thing is just our throttle linkage here. Simple enough. On our throttle linkage I'm going to pop off the other side as well just because I want to put a little dab of these things get pretty dry in here and then if they get loose then you just have a lot of slop in your uh, your throttle linkage. So I'd always like to put a little bit of grease in here just to sort of grease up the ball a little bit and it gets all happy. We can clean this guy off just in case if any schmutz on there. All right, so these just pop back on. Bink, super easy. Let me do the other side as well. Well, that's it for the left carburetor. I've pulled my cloth out of the top of it. I want to go ahead and start the engine at this point just to fill up that bowl. Just make sure it's okay over there, check for leaks and that sort of thing. And then we'll switch over to the other side. <laughs> There we go. At this point, we're just looking for any major leaks in the carburetor to see if we got anything backwards. We do have a leak, look at this, right here. See that? Yep, that's gas. And it's coming out of the accelerator pumps up here. All right, well, here. Let me go ahead and shut that off. Well, take a look at that. We have a little bit of a leak here. You see the glistening bit back there? That's not good. So looks like I'm going to have to kind of take this guy off and, and do a little more work up here. Sometimes when you put something back together, it's still not completely right. I couldn't tell a thing with how dirty it was before, but now I think we found where the leak was. It looks like it's in that accelerator pump. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor back off the car. We'll put it back on the bench and see if we can solve this leak. This episode's getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. We'll get that carburetor off, get it on the bench, and we'll figure out what's going on with it. I'm not too worried about it. Any of you 356 folks out there, if you've got something specific about the Zenith carburetors, leave me a comment down below, and I still have the other one to do, so I can go ahead and film whatever you need there. So thanks so much. Um, what we've got coming up is, once we get the carburetors back on, we'll take the car out for a drive and get these carburetors completely tuned and get this engine just humming away. I think we have an oil change we have to do and I got some other stuff, some more inspection stuff on the car. So going to be great fun. So please stay tuned for the rest of the episodes. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters out there. Thanks so much for your support. All right, well, great. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.